Hi, my name is Wade Cannon. I'm a paramedic and I'm the lead EMT instructor here at Idaho Medical Academy. Today we're going to show you what a proctored trauma assessment looks like. All right. You are dispatched to a fall in a business complex. Okay, cool. So first things first, we have our BSI, our PPE is taken care of. Uh, we're going to ensure that our scene is safe. Scene um, is safe. Yeah, nothing we need to worry about there. Uh, so mechanism of injury is the next thing to, to know about. What can you tell me about the mechanism of injury? Patient was working on the HVAC system, fell through a ceiling tile in an industrial, excuse me, a business complex. Okay, do we know about how far he fell? Uh, roughly 12 feet. 12 feet, okay, perfect. Uh, number of patients, just one patient? Just the one. Okay, um, based off of the height of the fall, I think it's a good idea to get ALS en route at this point. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll also consider stabilization of the spine. So I'll have Devin, my partner here, go ahead and manage uh, C-spine for me. Okay, so Devin has put a C-collar on. Uh, for the purposes of this, we will say that we have another partner holding manual stabilization, so that is being taken care of. Uh, from there, what can you tell me about the general impression of my patient? As you approach your patient, he appears to be unconscious, uh, no purposeful movement noted, uh, does appear to be breathing. Okay, any obvious um, blood or any bleeding I need to take care of I can see right now? You know a laceration to the top right side of his forehead. Okay. Uh, no other apparent injuries noted at this time. Okay, perfect. So that's my general impression. Next, let's uh, look at the level of responsiveness, level of consciousness. Is he alert and tracking me as I'm walking up? He is not. No? Okay, sir, sir, sir. Any response to verbal? Negative. No, painful stimuli, we'll give him a trap pinch. Patient does flutter his eyes when you pinch him. Okay, so we'll say he is responsive to painful stimuli. Uh, is he verbally responsive at all? Uh, negative. No, okay. Cool, so uh, moving on from there, uh, we are going to look at his chief complaint. Uh, at this point, he's not able to answer any of my questions, so I can't ask him verbally for a chief complaint. So we will label his chief complaint as uh, altered level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, and obvious life threats, there's nothing I can see here. You didn't tell me there's any obviously life-threatening bleeding at this point. Uh, so we're gonna move on down to the airway. So coming down to the airway, I'm gonna visually look. Uh, is his airway open and clear? Is there anything I need to worry about suctioning wise? Negative. Okay, airway is open and clear. Um, I'm not gonna be concerned about an airway adjunct at this time, but if we start to ventilate for the patient, then we'll, we'll step back and consider, um, consider an airway adjunct. Coming down to his breathing, can you tell me his uh, rate, rhythm, and quality of breathing, please? He is breathing at an elevated rate, roughly 32, at an irregular cadence, and the breathing appears to be shallow. Okay. Um, so based off of that, let's go ahead and start him on a non-rebreather mask. Uh, if you could put that at 15 liters per minute. Um, and so that will manage, uh, manage his breathing because we do have that rapid respiration rate. Coming down uh, to circulation, I'm gonna check his pulse here. Do I have a radial pulse? You do note a radial pulse. It is bounding, bounding. at a normal rhythm. Uh, and it is an elevated, or excuse me, a bradycardic rate. It is slow. Okay, so it's slow, very strong and regular? Correct. Okay, so uh, tell me about his skin sign. What is, uh, what do his, his skin signs look like? Pale, cool, and diaphoretic. Okay, so pale, cool, diaphoretic, um, and we already addressed major bleeding. Uh, based off of the bradycardic um, heart rate and his lack of consciousness, uh, I think it's best for us just to manage uh, shock management. So we'll keep him flat, we'll keep him warm, uh, so we'll, we'll consider a blanket during transport and all of those things. Uh, coming down to disability, um, we're going to try to figure out a GCS score at this point. So looking at the eyes, you told me that he flared his eyes to painful stimuli, so that's going to be a two. Mm -hmm. And we did not get any verbal response, correct? Correct. Okay, so that's going to be a one. And then do we get any motor response? Uh, you do note some withdrawal from pain when you grab at, or when you reach for his head. Okay, so he withdraws from pain, so that's going to be another four. Uh, so that is two, one, and four, and so we're going to have a total of seven for our GCS score there. Um, so we got that, and then major disability, he's not able to really answer any questions or follow commands, uh, so we can't really check for major disability um, because, because of that. It's hard to do a neurological assessment for him. So next, we'll come down to expose the patient. Devin, can you uh, 
expose him, we'll take his shirt and his pants off and we'll get him trauma naked down to his underwear. So now uh, we have addressed the exposed portion of the sheet. He is exposed. Uh, we're not going to put it on here for the sake of the video, but we would consider blankets and everything to keep the patient warm. Uh, and so now we need to identify our patient priority based off the GCS score. Uh, he has a decreased GCS score, so we are going to consider this a high priority patient. So normally we would want to scoop this patient and start to transport, but again, for the sake of uh, what we're doing here, we're just going to stay where we're at and uh, consider ourselves transporting. All right, so that was our primary assessment. Now we're going to jump into our history taking. Uh, first thing is going to be to get a set of vital signs. I have my partner Devin here, if you could grab some vital signs for me. Uh, while he's grabbing those vital signs, I am going to work on the sample history. Patient is unconscious and not able to verbally respond to me, so I'm not going to be able to ask him um, for his sample history. Uh, but is there someone around that I can ask in his place? Yes, his coworker is next to him. Okay, perfect. So uh, I will be talking to the coworker. Uh, signs and symptoms. We have what we have already visually and what we found during our primary assessment. Um, so we can move on to the A, and that's going to be allergies. Does our patient have any allergies? He is allergic to shellfish. Okay, cool. So not so much of a concern for us right now, because uh, we're probably not going to be feeding him any shellfish as, uh, as a treatment for this. Uh, moving down next, we have medications. Uh, he takes some sort of blood pressure medication, but that's all he's aware of. Okay, um, so past medical history, it sounds like uh, some blood pressure issues, I'm assuming high blood pressure. Do we know of anything else? Uh, negative at this time. No. Okay, last oral intake. Do we know what he last had to eat or drink? Uh, he says that they stopped and got breakfast burritos this morning. Okay, do we know about how long ago that was? Uh, about five hours ago. Okay, um, and then the events leading up to uh, what happened. We know he fell, we heard through a ceiling tile. Mm -hmm. Anything else significant that we need to know about for the events? Uh, the coworker says that he was working on the HVAC when he fell through the tile, landing predominantly on his right side. Okay, um, perfect. Um, cool, so Devin, uh, got my vital signs. Can you tell me what my blood pressure is? Your blood pressure is 180 over 90. Okay. Um, and what was his pulse rate? Pulse rate is 43. Respiration rate? He's breathing around three, 36 times a minute, but it is irregular. Okay, SBO2? SBO2 is 80% at this time. Okay, any change uh, that we've seen since we put the oxygen on? With oxygen, he's up to 94%. 94%, okay, perfect. Um, so how about a temperature for him? Temperature 98.6. Okay, uh, and a blood sugar level? 120. Okay, so vital signs are all done. Uh, from there, we're gonna move on down to our secondary assessment. So starting our secondary assessment, I'm gonna start here at the head. I'm gonna be looking for DCAP BTLS. And so that's gonna be deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, penetrations, burns, tenderness, laceration, and swelling. Um, so I'm going to be looking for that in general, and then I'll ask some more specific things. So starting here at the head, I'm going to be feeling and palpating. Uh, I see we have a laceration here um, to the right forehead. Do I feel any crepitus or any anything around that, or just a laceration? You do note a little bit of crepitus. Okay, so does it feel like a depressed skull fracture here? Correct. Okay, cool. Uh, so moving from there, feeling the rest of the head, uh, I'm going to look for my gloves to see if there's any other blood that I found. Um, how about this head lacerations bleeding? Is it significantly bleeding? Bleeding is controlled at this time. Okay, cool. We can still uh, have one of our partners um, go ahead and manage that. Uh, we're going to move from there to the face, feeling around the face for DCAP BTLS. Anything significant that I find? Negative. No? Okay, the eyes. We'll check the eyes. Are the eyes pearl? You know, the right pupil is larger than the left. Uh, left one appears to be reactive to light. Okay. Uh, do I have any um, raccoon eyes or anything like that? Uh, you, not at this time. No. Coming down to the nose, anything significant on the nose, bleeding, anything there? Negative. No. Mouth, same thing. Check the maxilla, the mandible, all that's good? Clear and patent airway. Okay, okay cool. Coming down to the ears, uh, any discharge or bleeding from the ears? 
Uh, you do note a little bit of discharge from the ear with okay. some blood. The right ear or the left ear? The right ear. Right ear, okay. Uh, how about battle signs? Any battle signs that I'm seeing? Any bruising behind the ears? Negative at this time. No? Okay, cool. So let's move down to the neck. So coming, coming down to the neck, um, I'm going to feel kind of behind the C collar here. Do I feel any step-offs or anything of the cervical spine? Negative. No? Okay. Uh, do I see any tracheal deviation or JVD? Nope. No. Uh, any subcutaneous emphysema noted in the upper shoulders of the neck? Negative. No? Okay. So coming down to the chest, uh, we're going to again check for decap BTLS. I'm going to come in here on the sides and then down the sternum with my knife hand. Uh, anything noted there? No abnormalities. Okay. I'm uh, going to get my stethoscope here. Uh, we're going to listen for some lung sounds in all four quadrants. Anything noted? Lung sounds present in all four quadrants with equal bilateral chest rise noted. Okay, perfect. So from there, we're going to move down to the abdomen. Uh, we're going to check all four quadrants. Uh, DCAP BTLS, I'm looking for his abdomen to be soft and supple. No abnormalities noted. Okay, perfect. So coming down from there, uh, we're going to come down to the hips. I'm going to look for stability in the hips. Uh, do hips feel stable? Hips are stable. Okay, I'm going to look for uh, any priapism. Anything there I need to worry about? Negative. No? Okay, cool. We'll come down to the legs. I'm going to do offset pressure. I do notice um, what looks to be an open fracture of his femur here. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So feeling here, I'm assuming I feel some crepitus and instability on this side. Correct. Uh, bleeding wise, is that bleeding controlled? Bleeding is controlled. Okay. So we'll move down. Uh, based off of the fact that he is unconscious, um, I'm going to, and it's an open fracture, I think we're going to bypass a traction splint at this point. Um, we will be putting him on a, black, a backboard that will splint that leg, so we're going to not worry about the traction splint. Coming down to his knees, anything I find on his knees? No abnormalities. All right, lower legs. We're going to no do opposite pressure. Uh, I'm going to be coming down to his feet and checking CMS. CMS is intact. Bilaterally? Yep. Perfect. Coming up to the arms, we're going to be coming down the arms, checking for DCAP BTLS. Negative. Nothing found. And then same thing, we're going to be checking for CMS here uh, bilaterally on both arms. Intact bilaterally. Okay, good. So Devin, if you can grab C, uh, C spine for me, we're gonna roll him up. We're gonna check his back now. This normally, uh, in real life, this is where we'd be putting a backboard on if we were gonna put a backboard on the patient, um, but we're not gonna do that here. So Devin, on your count, go ahead and we'll go towards me. Three, two, one. All right, we're gonna roll him up. We're going to check his back for DCAP BTLS. I'm going to feel all along down the spine for any abnormalities, step offs, anything like that. Anything you notice found? step off at the lower back. The lower back, mm -hmm. like the lumbar region? Yep. Okay. Uh, and then buttocks, anything there significant to find? Negative. No. Okay, so we'll pretend to put our backboard in here. Uh, and we'll bring it back down on your count. Three, two, one. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so that, uh, that should cover our secondary assessment. Uh, so now we need to look back um, and think about reassessment uh, of this patient. So um, we didn't have many interventions. Bleeding is mostly controlled. You told me that my oxygen was working uh, to bring his SpO2 up earlier. Correct. Is that still sustained? Sustained. Perfect. Uh, vital signs, any significant changes I need to be aware about? No significant changes in vital signs. Okay, so uh, from there, I think it's just time to get him loaded up um, in the ambulance, and we need to run him down to the hospital. Uh, based off of what I'm seeing here, uh, we have the head injury. Uh, we have pupillary changes to the right side that matches the head injury. Um, we have an elevated blood pressure as well as a bradycardic heart rate and irregular respirations. Those three things put together um, constitute uh, Cushing's triad, which makes me concerned that he has some increased intracranial pressure from this fall, uh, as well as an open femur fracture can be considered a life threat as well. So uh, this patient should go to a trauma center if we have a local, local trauma center, and we need to go code three and get that going now. How often would you evaluate his vital signs? Uh, I would recheck vital signs every five minutes because this is a critical patient. Copy that. So that was what a proctored trauma assessment would look like. Hopefully you guys noticed that this patient had a head injury as well as an open femur fracture and kind of seeing what it looks like and what we need to do to take care of those things. As always guys, be sure to double check on our YouTube page, like and subscribe for us, and we'll see you next time.